Hi, good morning, good morning. So coffee chat over here today, over in my business page. If you are joining live, then give me a wave, say hi, it'd be, uh, be great to hear from you. Tell me perhaps what you do, um, how's your day been so far? I'm just gonna grab my tea, I have tea, not coffee, my famous pink mug. Um, so I'll give people a minute or so just to join because I'm normally obviously doing these across in my group where we do these every week and the format is normally that we cover something specifically business related, some of the challenges around growing your business, attracting clients, making offers, etc. Um, but this week I thought actually what I'm going to talk to you about is quite transferable. So it can be applicable to people starting in a new business it can be relatable for people who perhaps have a physical business and they're looking now to bring that online and to serve their customers in a very slightly different way and to adapt what they do so they can actually operate online as opposed to needing their physical premises so I thought because it was a little bit broader in terms of of the people I'm talking to that we do it um in here today so um yeah, afterwards I will be giving you a, a sheet which gives you lots of the items that I'm going to talk through. It's this, I'm going to work through it with you. So there are um, three areas that we're going to look at, but you can download a copy of your own um, by just filling in your email details at the end and then it'll be sent to your inbox. So really, really easy. Um, so I'll drop the link into here when I'm done as well. So just give people another minute or so to join. It's just gone half ten. Quick slurp. Hi, we've got somebody watching live. Say hi so I can see who you are. It's lovely to have you. So just while we're hanging on for to make sure everyone's found us over across on this page, let me just tell you a little bit about me in case we haven't met. Is that how you would describe it? Met? I guess it would. Um, so I now run an online coaching business. I coach women who are transferring themselves from a corporate role into running their own business. Now, I started this off the back of what I did um, because I did exactly that. I left 20 years of a corporate world roles in various positions. Um, I did account management and really relationship management in the automotive industry. So very much um, all around long-term relationships and serving my clients. And for various events in our lives, it, um, it, it kind of worked for me to set up something from home so I could be with children a little bit more and have a little bit more flexibility around being at home rather than traveling a lot. When I started, it's fair to say, I had no concept really of what was gonna be involved. I knew I wanted to take a message to people and to be able to help people get on with their lives, do more. And I took a couple of different turns before I really defined the area that I now I now work in, which as I say, is coaching for women moving out of a corporate environment into working for themselves and, and having an online business. And I guess the reason I, I didn't understand what to do is because I'd been in this corporate bubble. So when you start in a role with, with any organisation you're given all the equipment you need you're given the tools and you're given then your tasks to do and you're kind of inducted and, and you get to learn your role as you go of course when you work for yourself it's different because you have to find out what you need yourself you have to um, do all the research yourself and if something goes wrong crucially you have to fix it yourself as well which um, yeah the organisations I worked for were all fairly large so actually there was an IT person that I could ring and say I'm not sure how this has happened but this isn't working or um, how do I fix this I want something to, to do that for me and, and there was always somebody at the end of the phone that was going to be able to help me which is just such a luxury and starting on your own you very quickly realise that uh, you are that person so you are the planner you're the CEO you're the head of the finance area you're the doer, you're the marketer, you're the deliverer of the service, but also you're the IT person. And depending on where you sit on that comfortable or uncomfortable scale with IT can make that either really fun and genuinely like, yes, I can get to grips with all this stuff, 
or it can be awful and you can dread it and it can be a real struggle. So the purpose of doing this for you today and the reason I've collated this information for you is because I probably sit somewhere in the middle of that scale um, and actually um, I did a degree in HR and IT. Now this is a while ago now but it sort of gave me a little bit of confidence around IT but of course that was that was so long ago I might as well have done it with the dinosaurs because a lot of the things that I talked to you about now didn't even exist they weren't even a concept when I learned but what it, what that gave me was enough of a confidence to say you're not going to break something by having a try so but equally I totally recognize that for some the IT can just be overwhelming and it can be it can be distracting and just frustrating because you want to do the thing that you want to do and yet you, the technology isn't supporting you it's actually making it more difficult and I learned very early on that actually you need things to make your life easier. You do not need things to distract you, to take your time away from the core message, because as soon as you do, you can just lose focus totally. And it's really, really easy for that to happen when you're early days and you're, you know that something has the capability of helping you, but you can't get to grips with it. And before you know it, you're distracted by trying to fix that. Hi, thank you for saying hello. Um, yeah, you can get just so distracted by trying to fix that. And then the, the, so the, the jobs that I've had were always very much around making sure that the IT fixed what the problem was for a business. And actually, the other way around can end up happening. Your processes should be your processes and you should be able to find a way to make the IT work for that process. The worst thing you can do is find something that has quite a, perhaps quite a strict way of working, a particular piece of software or the way that something works, and then twist your process to fit into that because you're probably then losing your core message, you're losing how you want to deliver what you do, and it's that is, you know, to use a, a great phrase, that is the tail wagging the dog because the IT, IT and any technology all these different tools are there to help you, not to hinder you, not to change the way you do what you do. And, you know, you've got to, you've got to own it and you've got to go at it with confidence. Say, yes, this is going to help. This is going to do what I need it to do. And if it doesn't, there's probably another one out there that will, in all honesty, because the market is flooded with, with the technology that you can use as a small business to facilitate what it is you do. So the way I've approached this today is split into the business areas. And again, this comes back to what I've just said, that, that this technology needs to fit into the core areas you need to deliver as a business. So what I haven't done is just almost like list out all the tech that I know that I use because that wouldn't follow the flow of how I need to use it in the business. And actually, that's the way I want you to come at this. That's the way I want you to think about what you need and how... You need to support yourself and your business. It has to be the business first and then the, the technology forms part of, the, I guess, the layers in between the, the fundamentals of what you do. So the, the document that you can download when we're finished is split into three areas. It's split into marketing, sales and service. Now, they mean slightly different things to everybody. They mean slightly different things to every business. So let's just, for the purpose of how I'm going to refer to them, just quickly cover off what those three areas are. So marketing, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as certainly my business is concerned, is, is just simply getting my message to potential clients. Simple as that. So it's telling them about what I do. It's giving them information about um, things that are going to be pertinent to what I'm looking to help them with. It's about them understanding what I do. It's about enforcing my brand. It's about getting my message to as many as I can. And, and it really is as simple as that. Now, there's some very um, scientific and complex marketing tools that you can use. And there are some very expensive methods of marketing as well. There are entire agencies, you know, on a global scale that are fabulous at marketing. And, you know, budgets are astronomical for some businesses to get the message out to their clients and to to then obviously draw them in. But when you're starting out, it really needs to be the fundamentals. Can you get your message consistently, easily out to your market? So for me, social media is the biggest one. It covers probably 
80% of what I do across my marketing. And under that social media uh, category, again, this is very personal to me. Uh, for me, it's Facebook is my primary. And then I have LinkedIn as my secondary. And because of the Facebook and Instagram link, then I've got an element of, of Instagram as well. But actually, for me, I probably don't work Instagram as much as I could. It has the updates that I put on Facebook just because they're, they're connected, but I don't use it massively. And the reason I've chosen those two dominant ones is because you can't be everywhere all the time. You can't you can't attempt, particularly if it's all you, if, if it is down to you doing all that donkey work, you can't be spending hours and hours and hours and hours just getting your message across all of these different platforms because it's it's draining and, and actually you will you will water down the message that you're taking. If you can concentrate on having one platform as your primary and then have a secondary that you can reuse your content in that other one, then that will allow you to really get concentrated on those. So let me tell you how I use Facebook. So clearly we're on a business page right now. So I have um, I guess three elements of presence on Facebook. I have my personal profile, which I've had for years and years, and that's where the pictures of my kids and my dogs go and things that generally I'm doing, like lots of us have always used Facebook. I also then have a business page. Now, this is where you are now. And I have a, a Facebook group. There's lots of confusion around the difference between a group and a page. So the very, very easiest way to think of this is that your business page is like your shop window. It is nothing other than a way to tell people what you do, to share certain things, to put promotions on there, to state what your business message is, and that people are going to find you because of its association with you and probably then your group as well. So it is, it's a, it's a, an ability to, to, present yourself as best you can. That's a business page. Now a group is different. A group is a community of people. So a Facebook group is where you would perhaps do, do more your lives or your two-way communication. So um, you might want to draw people into that to then start sharing information with them on a more detailed level. And I would you know when you talk about sales you 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 talk about a funnel a lot but actually you in any, it doesn't matter what you're selling and it doesn't matter what environment you're selling in. The principle is the same, that you put people, potential customers into the top of your funnel and it's wide, so you have lots of people. And then they they get sort of self-selected or you select them out as to whether or not they're suitable and they drop through that funnel. So from a Facebook perspective, your business page is like the, the, the uppermost part of your funnel and then your group is further down. So by then, your people in there are going to be more... Um, more your target, they're going to be more your ideal clients. So you'll have dropped them into there and you can talk more directly to them about what it is you do, how you want to help them. You're likely to get a little bit more of a two-way interaction with them in there because they're there for a reason. They're there because your group represents something they're interested in. They're, they're wanting to follow what you do. And I've seen some fabulous recently, some um, some groups popping up where people might have had a physical presence before and now they're creating a group and they're, they're, they're being the shop. So they're sort of taking the products and they're showing people the products, they're showing them how they work, perhaps how they use them in their home. And they're, they're doing that shopping over a video on their behalf, but they've done that in their group because they know people are already connected with them. So once you've got your Facebook uh, business page and your group, then you can you can choose where you put whichever content. Now, there is no harm in putting both in both, but as I say, I think the group can just be that a little bit more targeted. It can be a little bit more personal as well. So the other one for me is, in, um, is, is LinkedIn. So I reuse a lot of what I do on Facebook and pop it onto LinkedIn. Now, there's there was certainly when LinkedIn started, there was absolutely a culture that it was very professional and... You never showed anything personal on LinkedIn. It was all absolutely just about people sharing best practice in their business, making connections on a professional level that they would perhaps then want to work with or network with. And, and you know, corporations were using it to uh, create tighter ties across their, their workforces. But 
actually, I feel as though LinkedIn is not necessarily operating in that same way at the moment. Now, it might be because my feed has changed since I've left the corporate world. But yes, there's absolutely still all that stuff. There is still people wanting to make professional connections to find jobs. So that was very much a, an early um, sell for LinkedIn was that you could find job opportunities through there. You could tell people what you did and tell them that you were seeking a, a perhaps a changing role. But there's also another element now, particularly now while we're seeing so many people put onto a, a furlough arrangement and um, they're perhaps looking for alternative opportunities. People are using LinkedIn now much more in the way that they use Facebook. Now, there'll be lots of people like me who are on both. So actually the two overlap in their life and they might scroll through one for 50% of their scrolling time and the other another 50% or they you know they might have a preference as to which they 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 spend more time on but absolutely there is an element of 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 similarities between the two now and I think if you're on one platform and you're able to repurpose your content into the other one then it's really it, there's nothing wrong with that you don't need to change your approach it from taking it to the other one so you know reuse the pictures that you would have used talk about do your videos record your video and just pop it over onto LinkedIn as well there there isn't any rules there isn't any um, restrictions at the end of the day it's social media and I think people take everything too seriously they 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 worry about oh I can't say that on there because this is a professional network or well what if someone sees well you surely you don't want your business to be the best kept secret in the world at all. You need it to be out there. And, and if it's if it's out there and being genuine, then you will draw the right people to you. So don't be afraid to reuse what you've used on one platform to the other. That's exactly exactly what most people are doing. So moving on to one more around your marketing, you're going to need to somehow create a, a visual um representation of your business now that might be a graphic that might be some logos that might be um, some general information that you want to send to people around your business now you can of course employ a professional graphic designer who will do it and they will do it probably pretty quickly and they they will make it look amazing however if your big budget is limited and you know when most people start out it often is you can use some online tools to create something which is more than adequate certainly for when you start really really easily so for me my two that I really like to use are Crello and Canva they're they're quite similar so they are editing tools that you can put graphics into you can drop photos into you can make things look look good um, and then from a photo perspective if you want to use um, stock photos and images uh, I use Pixabay so there's there's lots of catalogue stock photos in there which are free to download. Both Canva and Crello are free to use as well. And you can you can see which one suits your style and which, which facilities are, are available um, in each. So I know Canva has um, the ability to create an ebook, for example, so something that looks like a, a cover of a book that then you can drop your content into. Um, Crello is perhaps a little bit more simple, but they've got lots of options in there that you can upgrade if you want to, to buy additional um, backgrounds and photos and, and, and um, effects and things on there. So it's a case of trying it out. But as with all of these things, don't spend hours. It's so easy to, to set yourself a task. I'm going to create perhaps a flyer or a sheet or a cover for something. And then suddenly all this time is gone and you've, you've not... Um, you've not produced your thing because you've been playing around with it, set yourself a time frame. If you're going to create a flyer or if you're going to create a little bit of imagery for your business, give yourself a set amount of time, go in, do it, do it as best you can and move on because it won't be the difference as to whether or not anybody buys from you. I know it feels massively important, oh, I've got to get my imagery right, but it's not. It's not going to make the difference between someone buying from you or, or otherwise. So, do it as best you can, make it a good representation of you and get it out there, get it done. Um, they're good for things like the Facebook covers. So um, you'll have seen on the group, I've got a cover and um, in the in the business page, there's a sort of headline that just gives a brief detail. Those, those were produced using Crello and Pixabay. So 
you can very quickly, very easily get something that looks, looks really good. And then the other area with marketing, the last area is emailing. So there's again, different schools of thought, but everybody needs to receive information somehow. So if you're doing your social media content, there is absolute benefit still in being able to send what you're posting and the, the benefits that you're delivering via another method as well. So from an email perspective, I use Active Campaign, And again, this is, you can use it up to a certain volume of contacts in there for free. And you can start to play around with what you can do. You can create um, an email list in there so that as you, you gather your customers, you might already have a customer base that you can pop into there. And then you can tell them now what you're doing. You can give them a link to your Facebook page, your Facebook group. Um, if you're if you're building a website, you can build it and, and send them the details of that in an email. So there is benefit in still being able to, to get those out via an email. But the other method as well, which is, I'm sure you've seen and possibly received yourself, is like a messenger, so more within Facebook, like a messenger business facility. So the one that I've recently started to use in there is called ManyChat. So you can use the Messenger, Facebook Messenger facility to again create sort of a distribution that then gets your, um, gets your information out there and does it in a way that you're more likely to get that, that reaction and, and give the person the instruction to perhaps take another step. So go and check out your this or you're doing an event and don't forget to sign up so that you get the reminders. So you can use that in different ways as well. And that's, that's really useful. And it, Again, that's free as well. I didn't say this at the start, but I'm not affiliated to any of these that I'm talking about. This is simply just me telling you how I use them in my business and what I do to get the message that I have out to, to my clients. So there is no um, there's no promotion going on here. This is this is just me sharing to save you the time and the pain that, that I went through and trying to find these things because the problem with it is... Um, once you start to have a look at some of these things that you might want to do, you look and then suddenly all the, the phenomenal algorithms and codes and things work and you just get bombarded with, oh, have you seen this programme? What about this programme? And, and they all start advertising to you and suddenly you think they all look amazing and you should be using them all. It is, it's mind-blowing how many options there are out there. So this is literally me just show, showing you what I use, what I have liked to use and kind of how I how I grew the business through through using these tools. So that is the marketing section done. That is your getting your message to the world, telling people what you do. That's that section. The next section is sales. So again, depending on the business, that will uh, determine what sales means to you. So for some, it might mean a, a fulfillment. So you need to actually send something physically out to your clients in which case there are fulfillment partners online that will help you to do that. You're going to need, um, obviously, a, a distribution partner of somehow, being able to get your, your physical stock out to your customers. And if you have been moving um, your stock via a direct sell, so someone's been coming into your business and purchasing and you're now moving that to an online space, obviously, depending on what you're selling is going to determine who you're going to need to use. I don't have that. I occasionally will send a, work, a printed workbook out to a client that's going to work with me, but I just use the Royal Mail for that because it's only small. But obviously, if you if you are going to do that, you're going to need to do some, some more research into what's what's good for a specialist for you. But for me, the sales piece is is really around agreeing that transaction with someone that we all agree we can work together. Pam, hi. Um, and then actually delivering the service that, that, that I deliver. So really for me, it's about finalising the, the concept of what we're going to do together and then receiving payment critically because that is when the sale occurs. So payment processing options. Um, I'm sure you've all heard of PayPal. PayPal um, really came to light through its association with eBay, but it actually has a very much standalone business element to it as well. So you can use that for... Uh, taking payments online and people know and trust PayPal and I think as a business it's always useful to have that there as an option. Um, I actually also use something called Stripe which um, similar to eBay you can create invoices, you can receive payments and then that'll be transferred into your bank account but the 
percentage that those people take differs. So again, it's worth checking, excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> it's worth checking just, just what rate is gonna be suitable for you. So do you need to take credit cards? Are you taking transactions from a board in different currencies? Um, are they paying um, using perhaps the PayPal credit option? So each of those have got their, their benefits, pros and cons. And, um, you know, they're both very secure. They're both um, fully encrypted in the way that you would expect them to be. But they have they have their, their differences. So research those two a little bit and just check the percentages that they'll take to do the transaction you're looking for them to do. But those two for me are my, my main ones. But one that I did look into fairly early days was called Square Up as well. Again, similar online facility that you could take a card over the phone. Um, or someone could be invoiced and they could pay online um, over the phone directly as well. Then the other aspect for me, and this, this forms part of, um, of, of what I learned in the early days for my business, is a sales funnel. So I don't have a website. I don't have a, you can go, go to aimcoachinganddevelopment.co.uk and there it is. There's a website that tells you everything I do. I use sales funnels because... They're more flexible for what I do. So I don't tend to stick to just one product, one service. I I adapt to the market. I change what I offer and I I make it sort of, um, I guess, seasonal. So I'll have one particular promotion on one thing for a while, then I'll change it to be something else and then I'll develop something else or I'll get feedback that actually people are ready for something, for then I'll adapt. So rather than having a static website, I use a sales funnel. Now I um, use click funnels, and again, not affiliated to them in any way, but I did, um, I did have my own coaching early on where they built a funnel for me using click funnels. So I inherited that, and that's just what I've gone and rolled with from, from there on in. But I do find it, now I've built a few, relatively easy it's not necessarily I can do a funnel in half an hour but over a few hours I can get a good solid funnel that takes people through a route that you can see that I've uh, asked for an email and then they've, they've received something in exchange for the email and then I can include whatever it is I've got uh, as my offer at that time in that sales process and, and it's there for me you can include video in that you can um have lots of imagery it can be really really simple it can be two two stages if you want it to be but the beauty of a sales funnel is it makes it as easy as possible for somebody so you can literally just make it one page they put their details in second page they press buy that's it done whereas you can make them really really long you can make them you know sell your products in a huge amount of detail you can put loads of words on there it's whatever is going to suit suit you and what you do but ClickFunnels is the one for me that, that does that for me as opposed to a website. And the beauty of, of going through a funnel is then that when they, they press buy at the end, then ClickFunnels and Stripe and PayPal are all integrated so the payment can be taken and they can automatically be then given access to what, what it is they've purchased. So um, little sneaky peek that for you to look out for. The link that I'm going to give you at the end to download this freebie that I'm walking you through at the moment um, that's in ClickFunnels, so you'll be asked to enter your email address. This free page is going to get sent to your email straight away, and then you'll be in my funnel. So you will see the first couple of pages around um, what I'm offering at the moment, which are two really low-priced um, DIY self-serve um, guides that you can use. But you you will you will experience so. so you'll see it, um, you'll see how it, how it can look and how, how I use them in my business. So there you go, no, there's, no, there's no secrecy, there's no smoke and mirrors about it. That is, that is the process that, that you'll, you'll use if you go and download this sheet. The other alternative to um, click funnels that I've heard people um, been really effective in their business is called Thinkific. So again, this is on the sheet, don't worry about writing it down, Thinkific. So that can again do the sales, the payment, and create the lead pages that you're wanting to sort of get out there and capture people as well. So they're an alternative. And then depending again on what you're doing, you may want somebody to sign a contract with you. So some sort of supply, some sort of commitment, um, an online an online contract can be required in it, depending on the service you're about to provide. Um, and there's a couple of those where you can get people to sign um, or in a, in a te technological way rather than a physical signature. So for that, again, I use um, 
I've used Adobe Sign, but I now use DocuSign. So again, that gives you a tracking, it gives you real visibility of what they do, what they're doing, what you've done, and everybody gets a copy. So it's all very um, very transparent as to where everyone is in that, that signature process. But again, very much depends on what you're doing, uh, the value of what you're providing and whether or not sort of that, that fits with what, what your business needs. So slurp of tea before we go into the final area, which is service. If you've got any questions while I'm going through this, um, any points of clarification, just pop them in in the comments and I'll, I'll go through those um, at the end. But the last area then is service. So this is really, as far as I'm concerned, how, how I deliver what I do to the clients that I'm serving. So again, depending on your business, is this might be a physical distribution of something, this might be regular presentations, it might be a two-way dialogue with somebody, a whole host of products and services out there that people are going to use the online forum to, to deliver now. For me, it's really the conversations um, as well as some um, uh, physical guides. So there's, there's quite a lot of, of guides that I do which are sort of reference you can work through in your own time rather than it being a two-way. So for me, um, I use Zoom. Uh, so that's, that's for all the video. Now, Zoom's had some mixed press recently, mainly because it's just gone mad. You know, you, you wouldn't... If you could have predicted what was happening recently, you'd have bought shares in Zoom. But... Um, they have, they've changed the security on some of their um, settings so that you have to have a PIN number, um, you have to let certain people into your meeting if they're not going to use the PIN. So it is a little bit more secure. I think the fear was that if you'd started a meeting and someone stumbled across your link that someone might end up there without you knowing and be watching your meeting, which um, obviously for some is, is quite risky. But um, I think they've tightened that up a little bit over the recent days, so, so it, is, it is more secure. Skype is another alternative to uh, to that that you can you can bring people in, um, and also from a video perspective, you can record what you're doing as well. So if you want to go back and refer to it later, if you want people to have copies of what you're doing, and I actually also use Zoom when I'm doing um, some some training that I'll then save because I can record the screen, I can share slides, so I can have my uh, I can share my screen and then also have um have me in the top as well so it just feels a little bit more personal rather than somebody just staring at a, a page of of words to actually see see the person presenting as well so that works quite nicely and they can they can then watch that back um through whichever way you're going to deliver that to them so when i record something and then i need to host it somewhere i use vimeo so again, you're going to see this when you register and have this, this email to you. This page you see after that has a video on it. So I've recorded that. I have saved it into Vimeo and then ClickFunnels allows me to present that video as part of a, a, a summary page, but it's sort of an embedded video. So I use Vimeo for that. If you want to get into um, editing video and cropping things, putting... Um, perhaps captions on it or anything that um, will, I guess, kind of call out particular points, then Camtasia is, is a great piece of software. Now, that one isn't free. Most of them that I've talked about have a, a free or a certainly lower, uh, lower element to them that you can go in at an entry level. But um, Camtasia is really complex and I've probably used a tiny fraction of the editing capability of that. But if you want to get into that, then, then that's that's the one that I popped on the list for you. But actually, on a you know on a, a fairly regular basis, you can just um, do your video. Don't worry about it. Don't overanalyze it. Get it out there and get it get it out in front of your customers. I wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want you to take away the message that you've got to get some video video editing software and really get um, all your stuff absolutely you know, edited to the perfection level. Absolutely not. Just get it done and get it out there. Uh, in terms of video meetings and training, so perhaps delivering training, WhatsApp is also um, a pretty solid platform as well. And you can, uh, again, draw different people into a single call so that you're all sharing at the same time. Online course delivery. This one is big for me because, as I've said, uh, there's, there's sort of two elements to what I do. One is the um, sort of delivering content 
where people work through it on their own but then the other element is um, live training both on a one-to-one and also a group basis so um, for that I use ClickFunnels so ClickFunnels hosts the content that I've produced and that sits on there um, for people to access in their in their own time now there's different ways that you can use ClickFunnels to drip feed certain points of the course at certain points in time or you can have an upgrade option that they they see this part until they've paid a little bit extra and then they see that part there's lots of different ways to to do that and in terms of a course presentation another great program for that is kajabi so again that is a it's a hosting platform where you can put your content on there you can use video you can use documentation um, you can use audio files and then your your member can work their way through different uh, topics in their own time or you can you can feed them them at certain times as well so that's Kajabi. Um, so in terms of I guess any other back office so organisation um, that you, you're going to need because you know it's, it's great having the, the customer facing piece but there's certain elements behind the scenes that they won't necessarily see but you're going to need to actually run your business. So for me, it's all about Google Drive. Um, so if you if you followed me for a while, you'll have seen that there was an article I did a little while ago about desperately needing a new laptop. So when I when I had always worked in the corporate world, I was I was given the equipment I needed, and we had um, a very old laptop at home that we worked out was older than my oldest son. Um, but that actually did absolutely fine for for quite a while for me. All I needed was internet access because I wasn't holding anything on my local machine which I believe is safer um, you can you can have a huge amount of storage for next to nothing or actually nothing in somewhere like Google Drive and you can store all your documents there which are safe and accessible you can share documents through that as well with particular people if you want to send something which is really large that you don't want to attach you can send it you can give people access to a certain part of the drive if you're collaborating with them it's a really flexible platform now, Google Drive effectively replaces, for those old school among you, um, Word, Excel and PowerPoint. So there is a Google Documents, a Google Sheets and um, Google Present. So you can you can use all three of those as you would have done, the let's say, the Microsoft equivalent. And then it doesn't matter what device you're accessing them on. So I can use my iPad, my phone or my laptop and be able to access the same documents in my drive uh, edit them, view them, share them, do whatever it is I, I want. So that for me is is crucial. Um, I can monitor everything in terms of the, the business using a spreadsheet in there. So what are the, the incomes, the outgoings, what are my ongoing costs, what are my software costs, etc. And and, and that, that all allows me to do that. The other um, document sharing that I use is Dropbox. And again, that's really just for larger files that I want to keep, um, like videos and um, photographs that, that might be sort of sizable. I use Dropbox for that as well. So again, that's that's an online storage facility. You can share a particular folder with somebody in the same way. Um, and I find that the two together really complement one another because I can have the Dropbox file um, that I can use to access when I'm uploading photos in and out of social media whereas you can't always access Google Drive for your photos while you're doing that. Um, in terms of other organisational tools, if you're looking for people to make appointments with you, it's really good for them to be able to do it there and then rather than having to wait to have a dialogue with you backwards and forwards. It just makes the process a little bit slicker and makes them feel that it's moved on a little bit quicker. So um, I will occasionally do a campaign where I'm looking for people to book appointments with me and I will use schedule once for that. So that allows me to put into um, an online calendar effectively my availability and for then people to be able to choose when they would like a slot. It gets booked in, I get notified of that and they will then also get confirmation that that time with me is booked. And it just it just makes it feel really joined up and it's quick because people aren't patient anymore. They won't wait, they won't email you and say, or can we have a conversation, you know, tomorrow afternoon and then wait another three hours to find out whether they're having it? They want to know that it's booked, it's in your diary, that's going to happen then. You both get notification and you're away. So schedule once is good for that. And then the last one that can, can really sort of tie lots of these pieces together is Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. 
that's a great little tool for building they call them zaps but effectively it's um it's an integration tool so if you want your calendar to then talk to your email and to your uh, funnel then you can build something which says well once somebody's put details into this place then you can create a zap which which passes that information into there which then passes it into there and then there so you can create a sort of a workflow of information on an automatic basis rather than you having to say right well I've booked that in that calendar but now I want to put them on my emailing list and I want to register them as being a, an interested party here you don't want to have to have that rekeying it's back to what I said at the beginning you need the automation you need the technology to do its thing for you and work with you not against you and if you're attempting to keep up client lists over here and email lists over here product um summaries over here and if you're trying to do all that yourself you're going to spend your time doing that rather than getting yourself in front of your customers doing your marketing and then serving your customers which at the end of the day is what you're supposed to be doing you're supposed to be out there doing the thing that you set up the business for not running the business the running the running of the business should happen as much behind the scenes and, and as automated as you can get it to be so on that note, I think I have probably told you everything that I, I use. Um, in terms of the, the tech, most of it is iPad and uh, phone, which I've had for a long time. They're not new. They weren't new to me when I, when I set the business up. And they work brilliantly. So I'm talking to you now using my iPad. This file will be downloaded. Um, then that will be available to me to um, put into my laptop and I can do then what I like with this with this video I will upload it for you um so that that is it that is how I operate the business and it works for me I have um I have a certain amount of automation that happens behind the scenes now the things that I've just sort of set up and they run just to keep me in regular contact I have certain daily activities that I do just to keep everything on track but it's it's now at a place where it works but when I first started, it was really a case of saying, I don't know which bit I need to do this. And then all these adverts would come in and tell me I needed this to tie it all together. And it was totally, totally overwhelming and very scary. But hopefully that has given you a good insight into some basics. The worksheet is there for you to download. All I will need is your email. And remember, that is a funnel that you're going into. The offer that I have out there at the moment in terms of what is available um, in, in, for what I do is that there is a, a effectively a do-it-yourself guide. So if you are early days to setting up your business and you're just starting to gather the information you think you need and you're probably watching masses of training like this and trying to gather all this information together to decide how to move it forward for your business, then what I've collated is a very accessible step-by-step -step guide which allows you to do some of that, that work. So I've done the research for you. I've done it myself, so I'm kind of living proof of, of what, the, what the research says. And I've brought it all together for you in a really simple step-by-step -step guide. So that for the price of this is £29. So for £29, you can get a really detailed guide into how to start up your business and to, to get it started really strong as well. And this will apply if you're starting from fresh. This will also apply if you're adapting something which you've already had, but it's been a physical business and you're now bringing it into an online place. This guide will work brilliantly for that as well. So for £29, not a huge investment. You can download that guide really, really quickly and you can be working through that this afternoon. The next um, level after that guide is, is training. So that is a much more in-depth, that looks more at the business strategies that you should be considering, the methodologies that you should work through to make sure that you've got that foundation really, really strong in your business. So it's not so much a DIY, here's steps that you should go through, which is the first one. The second one, which is priced at £49, is a two-part course. So that will take you a little bit longer to work through. There is um, the structure there for, um, for the training, and, but then there's a workbook that you follow on with. So you can then work through the concepts that, that I've covered in the training and actually apply them to your business and how you want to grow. So what, strateg what strategies you're going to put in place as well. So 
it's it's a two part training and there's training and a workbook to go and that's forty nine pounds. So if you register for this um, tech guide, which I've just taken you through this morning, you will see those two offers available. And I would recommend you just take the time to have a look because if you are early days in your business, it can be overwhelming and there is so much information out there. What I've done is just bring it down to the really pertinent, important points because it's it's easy just to go off on a, I'm going to research this and I think I need this. And actually, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your money in doing that because there are only very few things that you really, really need to make a successful business. I hope that has been a useful session this morning. Thank you ever so much for being here. I will see you really soon. If you haven't already joined the group and you want to, take a look at the link and pop on over to the to the group where I do my trainings every week in there on a Thursday morning. It's been lovely to be with you. Thanks ever so much and I will see you soon. Bye.